John, we've checked in with you periodically on what's going on, particularly with the tech startups in Israel. Obviously, the big story there is the tr continuing tragedy in and around Gaza. But there is an economic aspect to this, particularly with respect to tech startups, which are so important to Israel. Give us a sense right now of the play with the startups in the tech area in Israel as this war drags on. Well, you know, we're now uh, three months into the war. And what we predicted would happen has happened which is the initial reaction is that markets are afraid when we go to war, the shekel and the stock market drops. But uh, I think I was actually with you, David, just a few months ago at the beginning of the war, and I predicted that we would have a very fast recovery, and that is what has happened. Turns out that the shekel is now you know, fully back to uh, where it was actually better than where it was before. Uh, the stock market has made up all of its losses. And the startups themselves are really uh, using a lot of grit to be resilient. And that means to make sure that they can deliver. There's been a slogan here, Israel tech delivers no matter what. And uh, people are working very hard. And uh, the startup community, I think, is, is weathering the storm uh, well. Give us a sense of that storm and the, no matter what, what's involved in that, because I saw there was a report out of uh, a startup nation that said actually tech money, tech startup money had really gone down year over year. Uh, so what's yeah, being well, done to supply that down, money? It's gone down, David, uh, all over the world. Uh, if you look at you know what's happened to tech funding, both in the U.S. and in Europe and in Asia, is it's down over the last two years from the peaks of uh, 21 in some cases, 70 and 80 percent, and Israel is very much in the same league. Uh, now we have a separate issue, which, of course, is the, is the war, which is never really a good thing for uh, investment and for investors. But it turns out that the, the uh, startup community in Israel in 23 ended up still raising $7 billion. Now, that was down from about $15 billion uh, the year before, and down again from uh, 21, where it was 25 billion. So it's a you know significant drop, but it's more or less in line with the the global trends. And now the question is, what are we going to do as we come out of the war, God willing? And are these startups going to uh, join in the overall recovery, which I foresee going to affect the global venture market? And an important aspect of this, as you and I have talked about before, is the so-called runway for the startups. How far out can they go? Uh, there's some concern that that runway has now gotten extended to some extent because of the war in part. Uh, and talk to us about the resilience fund that you've been involved in putting together to try to help with that problem. Well, as soon as the war broke out, we decided that we had to take action and to raise a special fund that would enable companies to extend their runway, right? In other words, startup companies, by and large, are not profitable. They need investment in order to get to their goals. And the problem, of course, is that in war, it's not always the easiest time to get this investment. So we created a vehicle. We announced it about two months ago. And literally in these two months, we've managed to get to our first closing. We're now at $15 million of commitments. But more importantly, we've made actually 18 different investments in companies where we're choosing companies that have been affected by the war because they have team members who are uh, in the service, they are on border zones like in the north or the south, or that they somehow are providing critical technology for the war effort. So these 18 companies have been very carefully selected. We've done the diligence. They run through our investment committee, and we act as sort of a catalyst to bring additional money from both investors alongside of us, uh, both inside the company and new investors, as well as the government, who is providing matching funds. We'll talk about the government program specifically. I mean, the numbers I've seen are something like 18 percent of the Israeli economy is accounted for by some of the tech startups you've done. What is the Israeli government doing to help you in this effort? They're taking uh, significant steps, and they created a program called First Aid, which is about 400 million shekels, or a little over $100 million. And that's just the first drop. My sense is that will grow several times. But again, it's, it's all sort of like this snowball effect, where you create a core and then you add on. So with our 15 million, uh, we 
uh, estimate that we have actually unlocked more like $100 million of very critical funding because we're standing up and saying we're going to lead this investment or join it at a critical juncture right now. And there's no reason to wait because it turns out that in these crises, it's a good time to invest. Prices are down. The companies that are truly resilient and get through this turn out to be very big companies. We saw that in 2000. We saw that in 2008 when companies like Google or uh, Airbnb or Uber, these were all built in times of crisis. And we expect that there will be amazing Israeli tech companies coming through this war. I'm sure that there are actually companies being created right now in the few minutes that many of our soldiers are having to think uh, as they're in the, in the service. And I, I'm, I'm quite optimistic about the rest of the decade here in the Israeli tech ecosystem. John, on the private side, where is the investment coming from? Uh, there's a lot of coverage, obviously, about what's going on with Israel and its relations with the rest of the world. The United States has been pretty steadfast, although there's some pressure coming to bear. There's a lot of talk about particularly the glo so-called global south, not a term I love to use, but the global south really being increasingly hostile to Israel. Are you getting investment from outside of Israel and outside of Israel in the United States? Well, first of all, at our crowd, which is my organization, we're a, a global digital investment platform. And we're managing about two and a half billion of assets. I hope over the next four or five years we'll grow it to 20 billion. We'll have to check back and see how we do. But at the moment, about 95 percent of our funding comes from outside of Israel. And that's in line with the overall Israeli tech ecosystem. As much as 80 percent of the money that comes into Israeli startups comes from outside of the country. And it's actually, while very much driven by the U.S., which of course is the world's leading venture capital market, both in terms of startups, funds, as well as LPs, limited partners, who are making these investments. Um, we're seeing investments coming in from Europe, from Asia, from uh, Oceania, from South America. Literally, it's quite a global uh, uh, investment uh, moment for us. And we're seeing people who are actually saying, you know what, this is the time. I want to take a stand. Now, it probably helps that our resilience fund is uh, fee-free and carry-free, no management fee and no carried interest, which is highly unusual, I would say, unprecedented in the world of venture capital. And the reason we're doing it is we're a big organization. We can afford to manage this intelligently and give investors who are taking that step to support Israeli startups at this critical juncture uh, uh, a particularly good deal.